What is a classic? What is a classic? Comprise is a classic. Is that a good one, Todd? Comprise? Get love. <laughs> you know, Todd's gonna come with some vernacular. Todd, look, I'm on. I'm on summer break. I'm. I'm trying to get oh. <laughs> getting loose. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to go live. I'm trying to go live on Instagram, but I'm working again. This is fucking Gen Z problem. I don't know what's going on, but it says go live. Go live. Well, it's not lit up, right? It won't <clears throat> connect streaming software to go live. Right, it's connected. Try it again. Refresh. Try one more time. Third time's the charm. Yep, yep, going live right now. Welcome back to another motherfucker episode of Stuck Off the Real. As you can see, I got my boy ALC in here with me. You know what I mean? I'm right thank here. you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Come and on. Of course, we got the one and only Dr. Todd Craig. What's good with you? All right, always good to be here. Al, what's good? Good to see you. Likewise, man. Todd, great. Yeah, long time. It's been a long time, but today. I brought your fellas in here because for the simple fact that I came out here and we, you know, we started the off the Marv Leap album. It's been a long time coming, you know what I mean? Happy to be here, you know, almost feels like home. You know, we, we how much stuff we worked on in here. We worked on a lot of, Man. A lot, a lot of shit Look, in here. We did a bunch of joints next door. Remember the studio used to be yeah, next door. Like we did yeah, waterboarding over there. Yeah. And we did black cocaine stuff over there. Yeah, and just, yeah. yeah, but even, you know, the old days in, in New York, like, you know, we, I used to have a spot. You remember, Tall, like, I had to always had the spot in the city. Yep. So it was like, you know, even though, you know, yeah. the mansion was in Freeport, but then it was like, right. everybody comes to the city to do shit. It was like, right. let's go meet up at Al. So yep. it was always kind of like, yep. you know, the hangout or the meetup spot in the city. And that's how a lot of, I mean, I got so many footage of so many records that we did. It used to just pop up on me, like, leaving a meeting. Like, Yo, you at the crib? Wow. And we used to just make magic like in my living room. You remember that shit? Yeah, that was crazy going to Al Crib. Mm -hmm. Al used to have all the bud, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the crazy fucking beats. All the bud that you don't <laughs> smoke. All the is he talking about? All we you didn't smoke. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a closet smoker. I'm a closet smoker, you know what I'm saying? You don't be seeing me smoke. Because yeah. every time I smoke, I just had to dip off and disappear, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? Like, word, so it's a lot of history in here, you know what I mean? Um, And we here, you know, working on, you already know, the infamous album, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be crazy. So when I was thinking about that, I was like, I was kind of being presumptuous, saying like, yo, we about to make a classic, but that's that's pretty presumptuous. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to be like, oh, we about to make a classic. That's how I feel. In light of that, I'm like, what's a fucking classic? Right. What determines it? I mean, is there a classic class? <laughs> is there a definite? <laughs> is there like board? a? I guess it all depends. I think everybody has their own classics. I don't know if it could be. I think rap's been around long enough at this point that mm -hmm. there's different generations that have grown up. I mean, before even saying that, like what you were talking about about you know. The having that attitude, that mindset, right. I think is the way you should always approach music. Like, like yeah, I'm about to make something incredible, right, 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 a, cl right. a classic or any word that is similar. Like, yeah, you want to make do something great that's bigger than you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So every time you set out, I mean, every time I sit down to make a beat, I try to psych myself out. Right. Like, I was like, yo, I'm about to make some shit nobody ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I try to really coach myself. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the end result. It, it sometimes it falls short or, mm -hmm. or greater, but you always have that attitude. Um, but yeah, we were talking about it like, how do you when does it become a classic? You know what I'm saying? Like, Todd, like, what, what 
What's the years on that? When does something think, become classic? I th- I think it something could could become classic almost instantaneous because it's something you never heard before. But I think definitely one of the elements of a classic is it has to age well. So it might be dope when it came out, but then five years later, ten years later, it, it still got to have that that feeling and that energy around it. So I I think it does both. Like when we think of certain albums that came out that we had, like when the chronic came out, we had never heard Mm -hmm. anything that sounded like the chronic. Right. Mm -hmm. So part of it is instant classic, just with what Dre did in that moment. But then five years later, it was still dope. 10 years later, 15 years later. And, and especially for hip hop is where, as we coming up on a lot of these albums and the anniversaries, the culture is 50 years old. Now you, you're hearing albums, yo, it's a 10-year anniversary, 20-year anniversary, 35-year yeah. anniversary. Now when you start to listen back to that music, if it aged well, that's how you really know what I was listening to back then and calling it a classic then. It still holds that same category now. So hold on. You think something could be a classic instantly? That was That's what I was going to I was what that part... I So... Yes, I think it can be. You don't think it's the hindsight now of seeing it? Like you're talking about the Drake Chronic. Now we know it was a classic, but I feel like what kind of determines a classic is time. Mm. For it to stand the test of time, I think that's what really, because there's a lot of records that I grew up listening to that like really were very important to me growing up. Like it's when I was in certain phases of music. And some of it, when I listen back, mm-hmm. age like fine wine. And some of it, is in age well mm-hmm. i realize it now so i feel like i wouldn't take it away anything away from it but i feel like time is kind of the real thing that decides a classic you know what i mean but you know if something if something that you consider the classic back in the days as you was growing up and shit like that if you said to yourself back then like yo you know i i thought this shit was a classic but you're saying that it don't age well like you, you know what I'm saying? That that's that's like hard to describe. Something that doesn't age well. Like I don't want to like point out no albums that didn't age well. For sure, for sure. But I, I I know some albums that probably had a lot of hype to them that didn't live up to the hype over time. You know what I'm saying? Over time, it's like. But I think um, like the Chronic, like an album like the Chronic. To be honest with you, I don't think I was so young. I don't even think I was thinking. I don't even know what the word classic meant back then like you know what I'm saying because you know we was young and all that but um the chronic album it definitely did age well you know what I'm saying and I think the sign of a classic is something that you could still play in a party today. Yeah you know what I'm saying it's yeah. definitely something that you could play in a party because like there's just some records that if you play that in a party they might fire you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might really literally get fired on the fucking spot. But I, I you know, I think that there are pieces, bodies of work that maybe to you or I I, I don't know to the to the Personal. general public personally that can be an instant classic. What's the requirements for a classic? Just bare minimum here. Right. What are we talking right. about? So to, to me, yeah. What do you what do you think? Um, one of the things I would say is that the beats have to be super on point. Um, <laughs> they they got to be on point, and it's got to be something. It's got to be part familiar, and then it's got to be part something that you haven't heard before, so you feel like it's something new and innovative that right. that hasn't mm-hmm. been around, right? Um. I think that's the first element. I, I think then lyrically, it's got to be, it's got to make sense for that moment, but then it's also got to have layers to it. Um, I, I feel like a lot of the classics that we love, when you listen to the lyrics, you would you would pick up on certain things like a month later, six months later, a year later. Um, that that was just a sign of, of, of dope, lyricism on that album um 
And then also the thing that I think makes it personal, Al, is just it's the timing, right? Like if this is an album that you wake up to, you go to school to, you dealing with, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a loss in your family to it, like sometimes, part life. right, it, it's part of your life and it becomes a soundtrack to how you got from point A to yeah. point B in your life. And sometimes those might not be classics to the world, but to you, it's a critical album to what your development was, life-wise. I think... um like we could break down like the really nuts and bolts of what makes something classic, like the sound of it, mm -hmm. the actual attributes of it. But I think the most important thing is how it performs to the world, to the public. Mm. I think they really decide over time <clears throat> what right. is a classic because the actual sound could vary. It's mm -hmm. like what makes a hit. You couldn't really describe it or everybody would be at home with their hit machine just running right. shit through it because this is a hit. So I feel like what actually makes it could vary but it, when you see the effect it has on the world, like most classics, they 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 affected the world. It's like a time capsule. Like you could go right, back to that year right, and right. play that album, and it's like it brings you back to that time. I feel like those are them real, like solid classics. You yeah, know that, what I mean? That that is true. And, and you know, we was joking earlier about like what makes a classic. Is there a classic bull? Is there? <laughs> you know, is there like some kind of organization? <laughs> you know, says, like, this is a classic. That's a classic. Actually, it is. Question. It's called. <laughs> Quest Love would be the. I would, right. I would nominate him. He, yes, he, he knows his shit. Quest Love. Yeah, shout out to Quest Love. Yeah, shout out to Quest Love because he's dope. definitely curator. Yes, of, of all he stuff. knows his shit. For sure, for sure. He's like. A, he would be on the board if he, nah, he, I, I would he, nominate he, him for the board he, for sure. He would be. He would be I, I definitely would say public is that board. Yeah. Like you were saying, right. the public is that fucking board. Over time. You, over time. You see it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you get left out of there and you're not in the classic room, then you're just not in it. It's, it's nothing to cry about. Because there also could be albums that wasn't promoted well that could have been a classic. Let's say this because we're all from a certain era and we can name our classics all day. What what would you guys say is like a modern classic? A modern if you had to classic. pick one, just out of a hat, I'm sure there are many, but like oh, what? I, I would say, uh, uh, get rich or die trying. Right? That's and not even modern. Though. It's not modern. No, no that more. was that's always what that, is. That, that's not modern. <laughs> I'm not gonna my age. I'm gonna like, oh, let's go five. <laughs> let's go within the, within the last ten years. Within the last ten years. Yeah. Shit, y'all gotta ring off some names for me because I'm like off horrible. the top, off the top. I would say um Kendrick's first album, okay. Good Kid, Mad City. I feel like right. we could say that's a classic album. Uh, that might have been a little more than ten years. Yeah, but, but it's but, close to yeah, it's yeah, in yeah, a modern yeah. bag. It's into, into the modern bag for yes, sure. I, I definitely would say that. Yeah, and um, I think there was one future record oh, that yeah. was dropped that I feel like because you you got to look at how it affects the world. True. You know what I'm saying? You got to sometimes. Put aside what your personal taste right, is right, and right, really right. analyze. And I, I love all the shit. I know we all do. We all yeah, like yeah, yeah. people might think because of the type of beats we make, or I don't know about you. People always like kind of typecast me and oh, they think I only like one style. I like everything. Yeah. I, I'm stubborn when I create, yeah. but I love a lot of shit. People would be surprised. You know and, what I'm saying? And, so, and, and that's a fact. Like every time. You know, people like what you listen to, and they probably don't believe me, but I'm like, yo, I fucking listen to it all. For real. To be the only thing I probably don't listen to is like metal. You know, I was say country. You got some country in your <laughs> playlist. <laughs> I was, yo, they, they actually starting to the mess country with hip hop now. I take metal over country, man. You take metal over country. Yeah, I like some, some metals hard. Oh, yeah, real? like we listen to well, suicidal. You gotta let me. You gotta let me we in, listen right? to suicidal tendencies. That's not metal, but it's like hard, okay, okay. hard. Some of the hard stuff I can I can relate to more than that. You know, you know I'm, not, I'm gonna shut myself out of the. Metal yo, you know my le my least favorite instrument, son. What? Acoustic guitar. Really? I don't Ooh. like it. Like when I hear a record got acoustic oh, guitar. I skip it. <laughs> it just don't sound like if you get a loop that has acoustic guitar, you win. If you get a good one though, <laughs> you can make it pop. Yeah, it's tough. I don't like the way it sounds, man. But we're no. weird like that. No, no, no. That, no that's <laughs> such a fucking track. As soon as I hear the doom, the, the yeah, strumming of the yeah, thing, I don't like. I fucking <laughs> skip it. I don't you know like what I'm saying? Like but it. imagine how many fucking ill loops we could have passed up if I they know. paused. I know. But you know what? Like you know, you saying how you listen to everything. Yeah. 
I think that even is a testament to like when we sample records, like yeah. we really go through every genre. Yeah. So I feel like producers kind of have a, a little bit of an edge because we like really um we're like uh searching for sounds mm -hmm. and we're like and we're, there's no limit. There's no, it used to be in the beginning. 72 73 right, right, in certain years that was right, like we were really rigid right, on and then it switched right. and now it's like i'll sample from any era any right. genre and i feel like um just listening to all these different dropping needles and all these different styles mm -hmm. gives us a little bit of a and edge that's, and that's what i was going to ask you too because like we don't go for certain years no more so, like would you even sample from something that came out last year damn at this point right who cares? That's what I'm saying. Yo, I remember her hearing Eric Sermon saying that drums from um uh so what you're saying, which is one of my favorite beats of all time, right? Was from a soul to soul record oh, wow. that was out like a year before that, but it was only on it was a dance version that they only, uh, you know they would make like certain dance versions on vinyl. And he said he was in London, he's in an interview. Shout out to Eric oh, Sermon. He said that he he heard it that in a club. A soul -soul record, right? It's a remix. But it was a record that had just dropped the year before, and so it's like, my point is, right. it don't matter. Yeah, it don't. Really doesn't matter. It like, matter. <laughs> yeah. I, I be feeling kind of guilty a little bit though. So uh, a little bit. So that, that's just me. Yo, because I think my fellow producer is gonna be like, ah, come on. That yo, came what's out the last year? What's the movie? Um, that Prince did. Purple Rain. Purple Rain, right? Do you remember the scene when there's a wedding scene and Sheila E's playing drums? Yeah. Go back and listen to that. You know what she's playing? That's something for the radio, the drums. Biz Marky. The drums are boom. They sampled that? They took it right from the VHS Get of the, the film. Go back and watch it. It's going to fuck you up. That's why Marley Marl salute. Early what? on, this is before right. the internet, where you could go to YouTube and just grab anything. He took it off of VHS. Wow. Like mm. one side of it. You know how it used to be yeah, you painted yeah, to yeah, one yeah, side? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, like, you could, you know, anything from anywhere. Anything goes. Yeah. Anything not, and, and and even now in hip hop, people are sampling older hip hop records. So it is. Yeah. You might it might as well because the the music is there. I think it really it just depends on how you flipping it. We're eating ourselves alive. <laughs> <laughs> We're just eating our arm. Right. right hip hop right. eat chewing on his right. leg. <laughs> and that was the album. America eats its young too. Yeah, it's all good. As long as it's tasteful, man, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? We should, nothing new under the nah, sun. Nah, it's nothing new under the sun. So, you know, like, when we started working on this shit, like, I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? I'm biased. I'm like, yo, we about to make a fucking classic. You know a new saying? album. Yeah, like, I'm like, right. because that's the ball, like, I'm setting for myself. How did you feel, just from a fan question, like, when y'all did an infamous album, did you know that you were making a fucking classic? Or were you guys just... Fuck no. Hell no. I, first of all, I barely knew how to Can I say that was a classic? So no, you don't no, have to say you, it. I think you. that goes without saying. Defines a classic. Like, you thank made a classic you. album. So, thank you. Yes. Thank, but let me just say this. Thing. Now, I, I was a new producer. Barely knew what I was doing, but the heart was there. Like, you understand what I'm saying? The heart for it was there. And I just figured it all out. And you know what I'm saying? To answer that question, like, did, did I know it was a classic? Hell it just no. felt good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And you know, a lot of times I used to be like standing our music up to the music that was out. And I'd be like, damn, yo, do this shit hold up? And it was a lot of tough that was out of the time. competition yeah. out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, uh, Biggie's what's that? Uh, Ready to Die was already out. You know, from a production the, standpoint, it was Pete Rock from me. You were competing with the, the goats. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, looking back on it, but if you think about that too much, you're gonna fucking fail, right? He wasn't pay thinking attention. about it. He was I wasn't just cooking. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. But the music that was out, I wasn't wasn't thinking about the producers that was making the records. I was just thinking about the records in general, and I was like. Okay, yeah, this shit is dope, but we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just gonna move what we make, you know what I'm saying? I never really try to compare ourselves to anybody else, but now nah, I didn't think uh, the infamous as a classic when we made it. Okay, I definitely didn't. But then, at what point did you realize this shit is a fucking classic? Uh, I, I would say like maybe you know, 15 years later. 
A year later, you're touring. You didn't realize when you guys were touring. I just said, you know, it's God, crazy. Man. It just, it's just no fucking album. I, you know, because when you're still active, you still got more shit to put out. I mean, but it didn't take to say that album changed your fucking life from oh, there. Oh, because Juvenile Hell made a mark, but it was right. like once Infamous came, it changed It changed rap. Yeah. That's, that's why it's what, what kind of defines classics. I feel like you guys changed the sound. Like, like yo. There's a style of rap, when, you know, we would go do shows in yeah, Paris all the time. Yeah, yeah. They hipped us when we first went out there that mm -hmm. they said the Hell on Earth album was so influential mm -hmm. in Paris, in France. They said there was a whole genre of French rap at the time that was inspired specifically by the Hell on Earth album. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. And you think about those beats, they were real dark. Yes. And when you go out there, it's like, it kind of makes sense yeah. in a weird way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys were... They a little wild in Paris. You know? <laughs> Some of our People, best shows were in yeah, Paris. I mean, right? I, I think like probably like fifty percent of the best shows is I, in motherfucking Paris. You my know best shit ever was in Paris, man. Like they, France. They, they, yo, they really France. put up there, right? Like in Paris, like it's. I always tell people, yo, you can. I, I can never describe, can describe, the audience in Paris and the love that they give. Yeah, pictures yeah. don't show it. Right. Videos might show it. That's nuts. And so they actually fucking be there in Paris and you have these people like really fucking with you. Mm -hmm. Like almost more than fucking the US sometimes. More yeah, than the States. Not. You know, yeah, like they, they fuck with your whole body. Yo, yeah, have I was the time I went to Paris, I was out there just after y'all had left. It couldn't have been like a month after y'all left and I was out there and just like the love of the music and the love that I got from people, like people were rhyming to me. I was like, I, you know, <laughs> it, it's in French. I don't know what you're saying. It sounds crazy though. Um, but but the love that they have for the music out there is is top notch. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It's a different level. Because I think in Europe, they're curators of art, period, right? They're older than the US. So, you know, you got shit like the Mona Lisa and, or, you know, and other famous paintings. They're curate, curators of art, period. Period, yeah, across the, across right? the board. So when they hear our art, they're going to curate it. You could come out there with 20-year-old songs, and they are bumping that shit Straight like up. they listen to it every day, like it was yesterday. Yeah. You, you understand? That's, that's kind of one of the dope things of Europe. Yeah, like, traveling. <clears throat> always a blessed to like that we were able to travel all the world with this shit you yeah. know what i mean and uh we yeah. we i know yeah. he, me and you together have traveled endless countries yeah. off of the rap music places that we would have never booked a flight no. if it was like we're just gonna go here and now i'm thankful because right. you know we got to see right. a lot of shit just from right. you know touring and just what's, what's one of the places that you went to that you like god damn i can't even believe i'm here like i think um probably Dubai or something like right, that right, it was right, just like right. random. I wouldn't have right. never gone over there and right. places like that far. We know when we did Australia, we yeah. did New Zealand. Remember, we did New Zealand. Yeah, we were yeah, like close yeah, to the equator. Yeah, yeah. Like we were as close as you could get to the equator. I mean, I mean, excuse me, to the to the South Pole, not the equator. Right, right, Pardon me. Pole. Yes, we were like way down. It was just it was crazy. But yeah, I mean, that's always been a a, a bonus for me. Like off of this music that do, we were able to travel, you mm -hmm. know. Do you remember when we got to New Zealand and what they did when we got off the plane? Like, remember that? Oh, when with me? With me? <laughs> oh no, I'm not talking oh, about that. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> well, tell me, tell me the New Zealand. Oh, when they when they met us in the, when story. they met us in the airport and was doing the dances. Yeah, they was doing the dances, and I think they gave us some beads. Yeah, the Maori something. tribe. Yeah, the, they, you know yeah, the indigenous yeah, tribe yeah. out there. They 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 like hold the whole place. Yeah. They meet you in the airport. Yeah, yeah, they like you have to get their blessings to come out there and perform. So now speaking of yeah, what we went to, to the temple. You remember we went to the temple we before we could go we to did. the hotel. We did. We did. We were like we tired. Did. We had the long flight. We said, "Can you just take us to the hotel?" They're like, like no. "Nah, we have to go to this." No. Thing. We're like, "Well, we're just gonna go to the hotel first. They said, "No, you can't." No. Like we had to go check wow. in. Yeah, we had to check, we had to check in. You gotta check in. <laughs> you gotta check in. <laughs> but it was dope. It was a cool experience. Like we went over there and got to yeah. meet. We met like a chief. It yeah, was dope. Bro, bro, remember bro, that? Bro. Nah, that, that shit is dope. And, before I went to New Zealand, I never knew nothing about New Zealand. I didn't even know that, you know what I'm saying, that it was even like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm it, saying? It's like, always a trip to see that our music goes that far, especially the and, internet now, kind of leveled the playing field. But it's still like now when you you know, when you press upload on something and then two seconds yeah. later, somebody in 
Ghent, Belgium, is listening to your music. Right. You know, like I remember the first tour we did when we had a mixtape out at the time when the internet was just starting to buzz. We were mm -hmm. in Sweden, mm -hmm. in some place where it barely gets dark. Yeah. And kids came in the crowd. We were in the crowd after the show, and they were saying peace rhymes of a song we had just put out a week earlier. It was blowing our minds. And they still knew the, they knew the lyrics from the song a week because it was just the early that days was, of the that internet. Was Finland. Was it Finland? It was Finland. That was man. Sweden. But I think it was Sweden because it was a place. Sure. I think it was our footage of it. And kids were saying the rhymes, and we were like, how do you know these songs? Because we just put them out a couple of days ago. Right. It was like the early days of, of you know, the internet. internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We were just tripping out how things are so instant now, but now we in, in New Zealand, the, the, the indigenous people they was in tune with the music, so it wasn't just that they was coming to meet y'all at the airport, but they they knew the music. Sure, they were tapped in with the promoter and all that. Like right. it was like yeah, it was cold, it was like respect. You had you know, we 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 didn't really we would have did it regardless, to be honest, but they made it like you don't have a choice. And I respected it anyways, because that was pretty cool. Yeah, they were cool as hell. Yeah, it was it was a great experience. I want to go back. Have uh, you been there lately? I haven't been for a while. I haven't been there in like I would say at least eight, ten years, yeah. something like that. I mean, if the flights was so long, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There is that. Like, there is. I would be over there like fucking yesterday. You know what I'm saying? New Zealand is dope. Australia is dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I think those are places that if I didn't do music, I don't even know if I would. Be there, you know what I'm saying? Going yeah. to vacation and shit like that. So, you know, say that's why I always think music. You know what I mean? Yep. But I remember Todd back in the days. You used to buy a lot of albums on cassettes. Yeah, that was really. Yeah, so what? I was the album guy. He was the so, album dude. Cassette though, cassette. You had you had, the, you had yeah, the, the rack with all the cassettes. Yep, I had the, the cassette. Rack, what I was yeah, doing is on um on Sundays we would we would go to Sunday school. I get my allowance. We go to Sunday school after Sunday school. I would run to a record spot in QPs. It was the flea market. So now oh. um, I'm almost positive where QPs was is where they do flea market flip. So I used to go in a record store and I used to get, you know, one, maybe two albums a week and just be locked in. And I come listen to the album. I'd be in the crib. I listen to the album. Have would be in the crib. He listened to the album. If the album was really dope, have would take the tape and then be with like trash and then come back. I'm like, yo, where, where's my such and such tape? Like, yo, my, I left it in I left it in Marley's crib. So Al, me being young, being like, yo, tell Marley I need my tape back, yo. <laughs> not, That's legendary. That is not, legendary. Not fully understanding what it was, but yeah, like it was. That that was a thing where it was like I was definitely buying one or two albums a week. And then on top of that, I would just trade tapes with people. So we'd be dubbing albums. So I was probably taking in anywhere from like yo, know, five to ten albums a week, depending on what came out. Um you, you remember back then when you bought the tape, like you had to take a chance. Sometimes the shit wouldn't be dope, but you were like, damn, right. you, you had to buy you remember you had two choices, you go and buy two albums. You see, it was no like we had like yo MTV raps and a couple oh, ways that we could hear some right. songs, but right. you never really knew if the album was gonna be dope till you took it home and bought it. True. You had to right. risk you, it. Like you know what I'm saying? And, and, you and, only and let, me add, let me add to that. Hold on, not to cut you off. There are plenty of albums that I bought that the only dope song on it was, was the fucking single. Yes. Word. Early day. You're yeah. like, yo, what, where's the rap? What the fuck? Like, I want uh -huh. my money back. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, yep. then you got to go where you would you would wait because it was so it was your on TV raps and then we had video music box with with Ralph McDaniel. Shout out to Ralph McDaniel's for holding us down. For real. You would you would either wait for the second video, or if you saw Ralph was somewhere live and it was show footage and the show footage of the song sound dope, you'd be like, all right, let me try. I'm, I'm gonna there. take a chance with that one. Yeah, I remember this group, Positively Black. They had a single called Escape from Reality. Mm -hmm. Escape, and I remember like just seeing it on either, either uh, it was, I think it was Yo! on TV Raps and then going to buy it afterwards. And I got hip to a lot of things like that. Maybe even, uh, it was cool. Oh, it was cool. Some of them was good, like Granddaddy IU, I, I got oh, hip to him. Oh, he, from, he was from the group? 
No, but he, he I saw his video first. Okay, you know I, there was no outlets. I lived in LA, so okay. other than 1580 K Day, which played a lot of they would play some New York stuff, but I would have to get hit from like I would see a video right. and go by the album. But his album right. was hard. Right. He had the U is smooth, like he had a lot of joints on there that I liked. Diamond Shell, I, same thing. Yeah, Diamond yeah, Shell, was yeah, like, like Biz Mom. Yeah, I thought it was like yeah, Biz, Biz Brother. Probably, Biz yeah, his beat. album was crazy. But those were them the things you should just cop the cassette and take a shot, take a yeah, shot. Definitely used to have to take a chance, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and that's kind of like the beauty of today. You don't really got to take too much of a chance because you can like preview the motherfucking song. Yeah, you know what it is already. <laughs> yeah. Like that. But yo, back in the days, why was people like making their singles like the best songs and like the rest of the songs they didn't give a fuck about? I feel like that was happening. I don't know if they were doing it on purpose. Maybe that's so. all they had, you know. And they had to make an album. They had a single that was hot. You had to pressure back then. You really had to pressure to sell an album. So a single was really right. like a it's a dry. It was like a car you drove uh -huh. all the way to the top, and you get out of your single, and now you're at the top. It doesn't matter if you made money off it. It was really like a sale, a big advertisement for a, to sell an album. True. And it's like now a single, you got you know what I'm saying. You run it up. You put one song out and just run up the numbers. Right. It doesn't even have to sell an album it's a, it's technically a, nowadays but i think yeah. it was different back then maybe that's why i don't know but you, yeah and, well, you and know, some, back to, go ahead go ahead i, I was just gonna album. say some of what i think they was doing was they like some of those older albums they were charting new territory they they didn't they might not have even known that the music that they were making weren't holding up to the single in the same way they might have thought in that moment yo i got a body of work and it's dope um and it just after that single, the single rang off in a certain sort of way where the rest of the songs just didn't didn't have that same, they didn't hit the same way. Okay. So let me just go back to the the, the prior the uh, prior questions that we was asking. What makes a classic? I think what makes a classic, even in real time, without it being a classic publicly, is an album that you could listen straight through through. Yeah. Definitely. I can't think of any classic with skips. No, right. No, I shouldn't, I couldn't. I think that's a Obvious. If you got to skip, that's not a classic. And that's like three and a half mics, right? Yeah, that ain't. Nah, no. you can still get four mics. You can still get four mics when you skip, right? <laughs> when you skip. I mean, the albums that were classic to me, I could remember vividly because I had them on cassette, and back then I had the Walkman with auto reverse, and I knew if I was on one side listening to one song, whatever song it was, I knew when I pressed auto reverse, what song would play on the other side. Right. How well I knew the album. Remember when you knew shit like that? Like, yeah, yeah. like the auto reverse. This can play song number three right. for the side mm -hmm. right now. Like, you memorize that shit. Right. You know what I mean? Those are yeah. the, the classics. And, and, and when you hear that certain song on the radio that you like, and when it goes off, you waiting to hear the next song that <laughs> came on the album. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. It's not fitting the motherfucking format. But that's true. Like, like I'm going to say this. And even though, you know what I'm saying, I never intend to make classic albums, but every time I made an album, I always wanted to make every song dope. You know what I'm saying? Every song dope. Like, you know, I just... No matter this, what. Yeah, you know what Every I'm song. Not even like, yo, this is a throwaway song. Let's just hurry up and just get it done. You know what I mean? Always wanted to make every song dope. Like, so, you know, like on, on uh, Hell on Earth, you know what I'm saying, for instance. Like, when I was making that, I kind of made, you know, saying every song kind of dog, but a lot of people be coming up to me and saying that uh, they like Hell on Earth better than the infamous album. And that always kind of confuses me a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be honest, you know what I'm saying? I do have my favorites out of some of the albums that I have made. I mean, do you got a favorite project that you made out of all of them? But, or, or you just like, nah, fuck that. I like all my shit. Yeah, do you have, have, you a, don't have a favorite? Nah, I, I absolutely do. You do? Yeah, yeah, I got a fucking favorite. What is it? The infamous. I mean, no, I would I, hope it, so. It's not a bad favorite, but like I said, like all of them. But the reason why I always say that is because if it wasn't for the infamous, I probably wouldn't even be saying it. You, you understand? Set everything in motion. It, it sets yeah. shit in motion. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like a lot of projects from back in the days, I think people was consciously just making fillers. Because I think studio time was just so fucking expensive that it was just rushing through the album. You know maybe, studio maybe. Time was really fucking expensive back then. Like, hurry up, we gotta finish this project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. 
And you hear stories about artists who say like they put their little bit of money together. They wrote the rhymes before they got there. Like they knew it was a time crunch when they were in there. So, so that mm -hmm. could be part of it. Whereas, you know, nowadays, like, look, y'all are talking from, from where Al's at in his studio. So you, y'all could just sit back and relax and really put yourselves in a particular frame of mind without yeah. having to worry about budget for studio time in that way. Yeah. But look, even, even think about this too. Like, so infamous album was made after um juvenile hell and i right. feel like the, i don't know how that formula was but i know from hearing from you and from rifkin and different people that you guys are really allowed to do whatever the hell you wanted to right, right? on infamous look at wu-tang right let's all say i think it's safe to say the first album is a classic absolutely yeah. look at how they they doubled back from a, like a, a bad situation in the music industry rizzo yeah. had his shit yeah. and then doubled back they yeah. uh, there might be something there about to say about when you're able to make something in your own devices not with any right. outside input right. might there's like a, that's a good formula to make the best product of work body of work you can make if it becomes a classic the world decides but there might be like a a little uh pattern there when if you if we go through records that we all may say yo this is a classic you know what i mean and, and, it, and it might be chronic people's, it might be the artist's experience with having the labels tell them what they needed to do versus yo this is the vision i see for myself and then right. we've heard all of those stories. Um, yeah. RZA, Jizza, they all had those stories. So um, Dre with the chronic, same thing. Right. Uh, he felt like that. No, it was a double back after all the bullshit. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure, you know what I mean? Like just so, now. So there's there might be something to be said with that. You know? Sure, indeed. And and uh, you know, going back to the chronic, you can tell it, it, it sounded like he had freedom, like he was free, right? Yeah, just to yeah. do what the whatever fuck he, he wanted, wanted to do. do. Yep. And, and you know, even though it's it feel like it's more freedom with the artists today, I kind of feel like that these artists are a little bit more like constrained. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think the labels is kind of telling them what to do, right? Like they chasing hits and singles, and they're not really, you know, or they're not confident because think about it. There's a lot of artists that you probably worked with, and I heard you say, yo, these motherfuckers could rap. Yeah. But when we listen to them on the radio, if they Don't have they that. have to fit that format. Yeah. I think a lot of artists are even better than what we think they are. For sure. You know I think saying? even more than that, like I guess maybe what you're saying as well, like maybe the art of like making an album the way we were raised mm -hmm. in records we listen to is a little not lost. Outdated not lost but i think it's even the way music is consumed now and how like you know it's kind of a tall order to, to expect that someone's going to listen to your album from beginning to end yeah, that's with the, no skips right, right, or like right. in the order that you made right. it you know what i mean that that's uh you know to, it, you're lucky and that's how we make albums like when i'm making right. an album, i'm conscious of the outro i want to know how it's going to the next song mm -hmm. i get i care because that's just um what i like right. you know but i don't think it matters as much these days you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and maybe that says to why a lot of the new guys they just drop joints right. they got a banger shoot the video put right. it out and run it up it. It, but, but it's a good system because what if they put a record out and it doesn't sell right you know what i mean you dropping right. singles and it's working every time not to mention when you drop a single with a video mm -hmm. it's like its own little album release right True. you know what i mean you, it's a moment you're posting it it's circulating so like you know how many songs that we have on records that we didn't do videos to win or lose. Oh, we didn't do a video okay. to oh, win or lose. Goodness. To this day, I'm oh, still like, why we we, wow, we, we did real gangsters that. instead. We, we did not. real gangsters, and that know, was a good I'm one too. Gonna, I'm not gonna be mad at that record. No, but, great record. But that is a prime example. There's, there's a lot of those. Of no. the label probably being like, hey, you know, what no, I'm no need for it because it wasn't like a priority. The right. realist, the realist was just, Ooh, what, what if we had done yeah. a video? Really. Uh, like we just never thought about this shit, but I'm saying is like, uh, um, I, I kind of hundred times better. I mean, it just would have been dope, but but we would have watered that plan. And nowadays, I see that's why I think these guys are dropping joints, right? And they're not they, right. like maybe fix fight to sell records. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me let me let me ask both of y'all this because I think y'all could both answer this question because this is something I was thinking about as well. Um, I think part of what's happening now is 
there's not the same type of artist development when it comes to creating these bodies of work. Um, sure. I know y'all had A and R's that were with y'all, kind of helping to navigate y'all. Do you think that that's an important piece that's missing out of out of what some of the newer artists don't have when they're making their music now? You know what? I think that because the A and R is not, or the label is not really directing some of the artists, I think we you probably getting better music, maybe, or you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't even think artists, because everything is just so, like, free now. It's like, I don't think the artists even need, like, fucking stylists and shit like that, right? Because everybody got style. They know they own style. Yeah. The label is actually getting you for who you are. You yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying? They want to they wanna grab a product that's already put together. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think they're paying for, you know, a and R's to be look overlooking shit and, and things like that. That's that's what I would think. I think the job of A and R now is a little different. Yeah, I think than the way that we remember or how some that I remember because I think even the way the game is now, like mm -hmm. I think I remember A and R's being ones who had like an ear who were like the labels trusted to go find talent because there was no indicator otherwise. Right. Right. Now you have indicators, you have YouTube views, you have streams, you have kids that are putting their music out and they're going up prior to this. So the label can see that. So yeah. why would they have a guy on an A&R who's telling them, trust me, let's work with this guy. He got no views, no nothing, but I believe in his talent versus an artist who got numbers already. Right. So that's where that started getting lost. There are some labels who are now going back to the old formula and I fuck with them. No, ones who are going back to the Let's find some talent, man. Enough right, with this numbers thing, right, because right. look at how a lot of these artists with big numbers can't fill an arena, and their, their tours right. are getting canceled. Because the numbers right. reflect that they should, right? But it's not real artistry and not a real fan base locked in. So, um, you know, there's a lot to be said there. But and, you know, and 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 to tell you the truth, some of these main artists, you know what I'm saying, I, I don't know which one or who, but I heard that like a lot of the streams is fake. You know, there's always going to be some of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, a little bit of it might be a little fake. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why maybe they're not able to sell out those shows that they should be selling out. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the reason for that? Like, that people not sell? Because when you do a show, this shit is lit. I would, let's say, like, a Larry June. I, but I mean, let's use Larry for an example. He has a real fan base. He's, right. been, he, I, he's been six, seven years building it up. Right. And he can do three to 5,000 people. Um, Easy. Through the whole United States for you know a month and a half, and it's like he took time to build that, so right. his numbers reflect right. his his stream. It always is true. He built it up. It's not a fluke because you could also have numbers because your song is hot, right. but the fans don't love you. Right. They just like the jam. You got a bop. Right. You got a hot song, but you may be, and that's never what you want as an artist. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want your song to be bigger than you. You know what I'm saying? It's right. it's a good problem, but it's a problem. That is, the and uh, you know, so I think it's just a difference in that. I mean, I don't know. That may also affect why maybe there's not as many quote unquote classics. But mm -hmm. I I wouldn't be the one to just to the um decide that. I would like to talk to some of my young homies right. and get their opinion right. on shit. Like, what's a classic to you? Classic. Yeah, like you know, some of my friends who are 25 or 30, like. Right. You know, what's a classic yeah. to you? They may have a different opinion than, than us. Right. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's, that's a good question. Yeah, we may have to, I, we I, have to do a part two and bring yeah, some of the young yeah, homies yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, get some of that, you know what I'm saying? And hear their opinions. Energy, yeah, I want to hear what they say. Because that's true, because I really want to fucking know. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I might be like, oh, shit, okay. It'd be it, interesting to hear. Not, it would be definitely interesting to hear. And, you know what I'm saying, like, to them, what makes a classic, like, or do they even listen to older music before them? Like, do, do they study it? Right? Because I'd I say know most don't. I used to study I'd say most young guys don't. They don't. Wow. I'd say I, I know some who do. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a, I don't, I know we did a lot. All like, right. I always wanted to know what came before me. I was like right. thirsty to find that shit out, you know, right. like what my favorite rappers, what they were inspired by, right. or producers. Just to get the lineage and understand it, you know, because we're all playing a part in some shit. Um, I don't know if that's as popular, but I, you have to talk to some of the young homies and get their take on it. But True. but there, there are, uh, you know, a, a certain segment of young folks that I know they do yeah. all they listen to is like old school shit, and True. those are like the rare ones. Yeah. Like they really rare. 
they listen. Because I, I know me, I was super intrigued by the older shit that came out, like before me, like just off the cuffs, like James Brown. Yeah. Right? Like listening to him and then being able to figure out, like, oh shit, he's been through a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? And because right. first you, you listen to the music, you don't know their story, and then you find out their story. It kind of makes you want to go a little bit more crazier when you're working on music because I believe, like, you know, the people before us that was making music, yo, they, they really went in. Yes. They put a lot into their fucking work. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I think that's kind of like what's missing today. Like, when I, every time I, when I see you producing, like, if I don't even see you producing, if I hear a track that you made, I'm like, that shit make me want to go to the drawing board sometimes because, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because Likewise. when I listen to it, I hear all the effort that is put into the track. And that that's another thing that I think, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or sometimes less is more, right? Like, you sure. know what I'm saying? It's, it's like an even balance. Sometimes you can just have less or you can overdo something, you know what I mean? And a lot of, a lot of records that they thought was going to work didn't work, right? I think there's a such thing as a record that's too good. <laughs> and they don't translate. I, I really do that. When they put two fucking great artists together and it's supposed to go crazy oh, and that good. shit don't work. <laughs> it's like you're giving them too much. To make it too good. It's overkill. It's, it's overkill. It's like, ah, overload. like, come on. What's that Help down. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Yo, let me let me let, let me ask y'all this about uh, about th this ingredient for for the classic, dude. Do we put this in in the classic recipe? An album that tells a story from beginning to end. I think a lot of the classics were that, right? But I can think of some that weren't too. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think that obviously um, involves the listener more. It makes you more of a participant. Makes you feel more like you really saw. You know, this music is like movies. You know, we. We make music in the same mind state that you would make a film. It's not as cohesive because we're making records. You know, like a filmmaker makes scenes, they're conscious of all the other scenes. We make rec. I've never made an album from beginning to end, like every right. scene planned out. I never did that shit. Maybe Nas might have done that or like Kendrick or some of the greats who are like to really mastermind Lupe. Yeah. There's some guys who probably pulled that shit off. Yeah. And, you know, that's incredible. But I do think if you could, tell a story, you bring the people in more, Eminem, you know what I mean? It's like artists who really, they tell the story and, and you just become a part of it, I think. That's big, but then there's like, you know, Slick Rick is a, is a classic record to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. Yeah. That's just a collection of great fucking records. He was a great writer, oh, you know, and the beats man. were on point. And so, who knows? You know what's so crazy about that album now that you mentioned it? It's like, it was nothing like it before it. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck told him to do vocals like that? With the multi-tracks, like... Back and forth. Yeah, oh, like, right. the, yeah. like, replying to yourself. Yeah, was there right. an album all before that like that? Like, anybody? Did, did, did you nah. know that, uh, did nope. that shit? Nope. And then nope. even, like, he did different parts. Like, he would do the Pocahontas part, then he would do the... Like, he was he was somewhere else with it. Yeah, he um he talk about style and like swag and all that shit. He's like one of the main inventors when it comes to the rap. You can go back to Ron Z too and see the same thing that loose. Yeah, yeah that, 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 it was like right. you can hear it in Spook, you can hear it in B Real, you can hear it in yeah. so many artists that came out. Like Slick right. Rick is just an inventor of sauce, you know what I mean? So shit like that where it just changed the whole game. But yeah, if you can tell a story, um and, and also weave in with a with, um, great you know, produced record and you win. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I, I, I do think you win. <laughs> with a, with a, I, I, oh, we wouldn't be talking about you. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if it's not a well-produced well record, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, like so many albums like that, you know what I mean? And, and listening to those albums, I think I think that the artists today should kind of listen to some of this shit before. Hey, if you don't, you don't. It's all good. But imagine how much more better you could become if you listen to the shit that came before you and be like, oh, shit, because you could build off of something that you probably didn't even think you had in you, right? Like, and, and, and you might be doing something that's already been done. You don't even realize it. True. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like, whoa, oh, oh shit, they were already, you know, like when I had Mantronics old beats and he was rolling the snare. It was like yeah, he this was one, already he was doing it back then and cash money, you know, like, mm -hmm. like oh shit. Yeah. They they probably knew what if they didn't, you know, like it's always to be conscious of what came because we all stand on the shoulders of the shit that came before us. Absolutely. Like whether you realize it or not, you know, so uh -huh. just be conscious of the shoulders you stand on. <laughs> 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 that guy down there, you don't even know him. Oh, shit, my bad. You be like, my bad. Yeah, I'm down here. I'm down here. I got you. Don't worry. You're doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I say this though. I, I let me just say this. I don't think I've produced a classic album yet. What? I think it's ahead of me yeah. still. I have records that I have you're albums. Not gonna say that. I don't have an influence. Nah, we're not letting. Nah, we're not letting you get away with that. Album. Nah, I we're have records. I have moments. I'm just I saying. Know. I I'm, I still strive to make something that stands the test of time. Like sure. I have records. Like you know, my first record and there other things over time. Right. Like a lot of people love the currency record okay. that I did earlier, but I'm like, right. I still am thriving, striving, you know what Ooh, I'm saying? To make that. Yeah, he being humble, he being humble, but let's no, just no, say, yeah. first infantry. First yeah. infantry. So, right? Have you went to first infantry? I was going to go to to Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Yeah, that's a classic. You that was the beginning of it. That's a classic. You yeah, that was a, that's not the first full album you produced, right? Outside of my album, that was right. the first full thing. Right, right. Yeah, and if, that shit just was different. if you remember, that was right after we did the G Unit thing, and the G Unit right. album came out, and it did good, but it was like we, we were happy, but it was. I remember P sitting back, going, "I got a show, D man, and we got right. streets on fire right, still," right, and, right. and he really was on a mission at right. the moment, right, and right. then uh, we were sitting there talking. Uh -huh. And he was like, we were talking about his old jewelry. Yeah. Remember, he used to have the Mac. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't know how it yeah. came up. But we yeah. saw a picture somewhere, and he had the picture with the Mac. He's like, he said, yeah, son, he used to have a gold clip that came out. Yep. And, he, and I was like, whatever happened? He's like, I don't know. I said, yo, we need to go back to that era. And that's how we decided to name it Return of the Mac. Mac. So then when he had the name, I was like, yo, I could just use, because it was going to be a mixtape. So I just started going into the files of the black exploitation films yes. because of the name, the, you know, the Mac. Yes, so yes. that's why a lot of those records we oh. used. And it was like P at that time we had got to the point where he was starting to trust me, like, right. like you know, like how you had it. It was like right. eighty percent, right. and maybe 10, 20 percent of the time, if you had a beat for him that you thought was ill, he didn't see it. Like ninety percent of the time, if you said I got something ill for you, he agreed. Uh -huh. And it was getting to that point then where I was like pretty much yeah, anything I pulled up. Yeah. He's like, yeah, and that's how we, we just did it quick. Yo, so, that's yeah. so fucking crazy. Yeah, yo, I, I I I wish people was here for so many fucking things. I yeah. I, I could write a whole list. Straight up. One of them is definitely like just finding this out that that's how you name the fucking yeah. album. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Jeez, I do. You know, he's the idea master. You know, yeah, sitting out. there coming up with shit. Right, right. Oh, fuck. Man, man, that dude is insane. And, yeah. and there's certain words that he said on records. I'm like, yo, what the fuck did you say? Not that I don't know what, which word he said. Like, I'm like, yo, what did you like? You know what I'm saying? Because we don't have the, the words on it. But there's some words that I wish some days I could make it. Hey, what did you say on that part? He used to break rules. That's why I loved him the most. Right. He was like, got laced with big guys down to Santa Barbara. Just Nobody do it to Marbury right. so he could rhyme it with the Marbury. Like, he knew how to say it. He, he, he right. just wanted to be unique. Look at my chain. Look at my anklet. Right. I used to laugh at him. Like, you ain't wearing that anklet, right. man. He's like, no, I'm just trying to be unique. Right, 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 right. He nah. was different, man. Nah. He was different and definitely, you know, I... <laughs> I know it sounds cliche, man, but he definitely was one of the best lyricists around, man. Like he was what? literally, man, like you know, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm guilty of this. I didn't really know how good he was. You understand know what I'm saying? Like I'm really, you know just, what I'm saying? But if I would have let that if sink in them. too much, I think I would have been. Uh, 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 what, what's what's the word? Um, like you know when you like like. When you're so conscious about some shit, like I would have you out. Yeah, I would. I think it would have fucked me up, and I just would have been hot in the corner writing my rhymes. So I didn't really pay attention <laughs> to how good it was until you know I started seeing everybody just balancing out to his feet. Like I'm like, yo, I'm like, yeah, yeah, son is dope. Like 
but then when I sat down and really fucking listened and just listened to what he was saying, I'm like, yo, this guy is fucking nuts. Like he's fucking crazy. It was that infamous how it was a clear oh, change. I'm glad you saw it when you were telling me. Oh, it, it was a clear yeah, change. Yeah, like some snap and he just turned yeah, up. Yeah, and it's just like, what the fuck? It's nah, a but crazy you know, arrival. You know, like, oh. But not if you listen to it, if you listen to Juvenile Hell, you can hear the point where P made that turn. I'm going to tell you exactly where it is. Listen to Hold Down the Fort. The way he ah. rhymes and hold down the fort, it's like, what go P, back to that. What what P is that? Like it, the whole back like the way he was hesitating, dragging yeah. different lines. Like, yeah, his whole flow. He formed the block. Mm -hmm. Who is it, son? Yeah, you man. Gotta go back. I gotta go listen me, to that. Yeah, man. if you when you listen to the whole album, but then you listen to hold down the fort, you can see it's like, oh, they did this. This was towards the end of this album, right? And on the right. way to to what the infamous part. Then I remember later hearing the A Black Patty Shop, yeah. And that's when you hear it too, right. and yeah. Pete yeah. arriving, like, uh -huh. thing mm -hmm. up, like, yeah, his tone, his whole shit was like a new fucking person arrived, like it was crazy. It, it really was, man. And 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 hold down the foot. That's like one of the first beats I ever produced. Really. Like I think we had what? What did I have? I had like uh, the ASR, Insonic EP. I, I had the Insonic. Yeah, Insonic. So you could take the sample and you know go boom 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 boom. boom. I was keys. like boom 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 boom. Did boom, you do boom, one sample? Did you do Shook One's part one on that? I did Shook One's part one. No, I I might have. Yeah, yeah. Because it has that. Yeah, I sampled it, but. I wasn't playing with the keys yet. Oh, okay. I just was like mm -hmm. being safe and just doing one sample because I just learned how to make beats. So I said, okay, this is the loop. Yeah. Put the fucking drum but stop son, drums on it. Who showed you how to use the EPS? Prodigy. How did he know how to use it? Because that's the original oh, ASR 10. It was before the ASR 10. I don't know who told him how to do that shit. Like he, when I went to his grid, I was like, yo, can you show me how to use this? He must show you the just, But then how did you learn the NPC? I just learned the NBC by probably like, you know, maybe Oz Professor. Whoever was around, just large, you know, just show you some tips and go. I never read a uh, um, manual. A manual. <laughs> it's very right. <laughs> How do you do this? That's right. all I need to know. Just tell me how to sample. I'm off. I'm off. That's all. I'm all good. Nope. That's the rest of the shit you figure out on your own. For sure. Right? For like, sure. You know but, yeah. I, but I will say this, though. Sometimes I do feel bad because I remember one time. I was uh I was making a beat, and this is like like just saying like sometimes maybe you should be the fucking thing, you know what I'm <laughs> because one time I was making a beat live, or well, you know how to do those like live beats in, in, in person and shit like that. Somebody see me working with the equipment, and they was like, "Yeah, that's what motherfuckers don't know how to work their own equipment." Because I wasn't using all the features. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Yo, but you know what though? I'ma say that to to my credit, without fucking knowing all the features, I still came up with a motherfucking banger. What? You know what I'm saying? Because now your, your hands is a little tired and limited. Because back in the days, we only had like three seconds of sample time, Son. so we used to have to speed that shit up to 45. If you created most of the fucking to sample, sample speed the record up to and just I sample think it. That's what make you make a beat even better because it's limitations. Limitations. Yeah. You're not, not free to do anything. Activity. For sure. For you sure. know what I'm saying? So that is that crazy, son. son. Yo, son. I'm all making the beat live and motherfuckers like it, it was some feature that I, I didn't know how to do, or you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah, 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 yo, yo. I never gave a fuck about because I'm just making beats. I'm, I'm yo, a fuck. when I learned the SR, I didn't know what any of the words meant. Quantize, right. truncate. Right. I had no idea what they meant. Right. Just, does it? What does it do? Well, I think you figured it out. I didn't know what any of those wave, wave, wave sample. I didn't right. know what any right. of that shit meant. And Cut you off. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you turn on the you turn on Sometimes the problem is it freezes up a lot. Right. So you'd be in the middle of making a beat. It's just like a dinosaur. It's right, like right, a fucking right. old ass machine. But it's, old. it's got a great sound. I made so many good ones through there, but yeah, it's just for fun. I tried, I tried to buy an MP online, like the MP66 2000. Yeah. But your formula now is great. Yeah, I love the shit it, right it's now. Cool. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, listen, 
I was thinking this earlier too, because when I seen you working on the MP, and I was like, you know what? It's, you know, all these new bells and whistles come out every now and then, and everybody just to go buy it. Oh, this is the new this, or this, yeah. this, or this is Fruity Loops. Let me get this. It really don't matter what you have. They all do the same shit. For sure. Yeah. Yep. You find your voice. They all do the same shit. Yeah. Either you a good beat maker or you're not. There's no piece of equipment that's going to make you a better... No, no. Some people are tech people. So they're like, right. they enjoy the different technology. Yeah. I'm like, not nah, that guy. I want right, to get to the right. finished product. Right. I want to get to the beat being done. Like, so and by any means, like, I really don't care about that shit as long as I can... Whatever I can get to it quickest. So whatever machine I know best, you know, like large... Oh, he's like a master of all machines. He'll bring the 1,000 over here, a 3,000, two ASRX. He's just like machine master. And he and get funky with all of them, right. you know what I mean. But at any given time, have one he's really like getting busy with at the time. But you know, like that's my I, my idol, you know, you as well. Like oh, yeah. I learned so much watching Havoc, bro. Like you know, sitting there in those rooms at the soundtrack, yeah. and you used to be in there making beats in front of thirty people. No. And, yo, it was nuts. I can't even imagine doing that. To but me. It, like, I, I really like just drum patterns and bass lines, right. and like, yeah, you have it naturally. Like, I learned so much, and I don't even think you knew what you were doing. You just were going for the funk. Remember, he used to like go like this underneath the table to hear the bass. Yeah. There's a certain ways in the room you can lean, yeah, and the yeah. bass sounds better or heavier, yeah, more when intense. You, when you go into the ball, you <laughs> like this, this is it I learned that shit from Hav, man. Yeah, yeah, but like but Al, the, the crazy thing is, yo, Hav was doing pause button tape beats when we uh, was like 12, 13. So it's, yeah. it, it's been something that, to, to see it now, it, like, it almost feels normal because I think back and I'm like, yeah, well, that's what you was doing before. It make all the sense in the world. Exactly. Well, it's just a progression of it. Right. But but then watching him in the studio and I remember the one time I was like, Todd, you want to learn how to make a beat? Come on. And I followed her. And then there was one point where he was like, I was like, yeah, nah, I'm out. So man, it's not what he does. He makes it look easy. But I mean, it's. Man, look, just listen to the burn beat one time. Listen to the drum pattern and bass line and burn. You know what I'm saying? Like, that'll just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Just the, the sense of knowing where to drop the notes, how to, like, make a, a drum swing. It, it's, it looks easy, but it's, it's decision-making. Like you were saying, it's not always technical. Some of the shit I do is a one-shot loop sometimes, and the next thing I'll chop the beat up 37 ways. It really doesn't matter. It's really we're making songs, you know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah, I learned a lot. I, 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 and, you know what I'm and, saying? <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot, and still learn a lot from you to this mm-hmm. day. You know what I'm saying? I'm a life student. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm a life student. If I see some shit that is dope, and I'm like, oh yeah, I fuck with that. How you, how you how you do that? Or you know, I try to figure it out. You know what I mean? Because I'm always thinking of ways of trying to. Because sometimes I get bored with just doing it a certain way sometimes and I want to try new styles you know what I'm saying and as a producer you always want to try different styles because all artists are not the same do you understand what I'm saying all artists is not boom bap you right. know what I'm saying and if you just get stuck just make boom bap all day it's like you you kind of limit yourself you know what I'm saying or if you get stuck in one tempo all the time you limit yourself you know what I'm saying? Because then when you finally try to make it, it's just gonna sound crazy, right? So I like I, I like the slow beats, I like the mid tempo beats, I like the fast beats. I got mad trap beats in my in, in, in my computer. You know what I'm saying? I think one of your skills is crazy that you still ain't done yet. I feel like you're gonna do a song, an album with a with a singer. You make beats, I don't even want to call them R and B, but his sense of keys and chords for like some beautiful sounding beats and shit. Or, or even taking a simple beat and putting a melody on it, like I don't know. That's a that's but, a goal. I, as a fan, I would want. There has to be the right voice. Yeah, without without letting any kind of cat out of the back. You got some. I things. think that no. I I think that you <laughs> might get to that place before we based on our prior conversations, but we got to say shit. Yo, that that's incredible. What you told me. That We're was, not gonna let the cat out right. of the back. But how was how was that experience? I mean, you know. I just you know, <clears throat> it's definitely a goal. Uh, something I always wanted to do, just because right, right. we're so wrapped out, you know, and we do 
like well we work with i feel some of the best rappers so i feel like damn it's so you could try to push artists to be melodic and get a different bag out of them they're like right. working with freddie kids right. who already has that bag to go in right. and search larry june he can do a melodic thing and rap but i feel like doing a project without rap is such a challenge to, right. to just like and it's um, so dope. Escape for a minute. Right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice little escape. Let me ask this. This, this is not a, not a topic that we never touch. But do you think there's an artist out there that you probably could work with? Just, they, they're not here yet, or maybe you worked with them before that could kind of make you even better or push you to the limit, to, to a certain higher limit. There's artists that challenge you. For sure. And to be honest, like, uh, I look forward to those moments when I can work with an artist who wants to put me beyond what i'm doing because it's like to be honest i probably won't do a lot of that stuff on my own right. and you're only going to get you know the saying same thing every day get the same result you want a different result yeah. so anytime i like collaborate i always get like a, a great result that i wouldn't have gotten like one day i was working i went and dj for him and then he was in town and he was uh working at dre studio and i went in there just to go see him right and um just so happened that uh i brought my equipment anyways just in case right but i wasn't going to work who pulls up when i'm outside smoking anderson pack yo Al, what are you doing right. no i just can't hang in there bro i got the other room come on I, my, I got my equipment cool go in there right. fred rec comes in uh -huh. we start jamming out making beats together right, right. next thing you know m gotta leave they're like his management comes in yo we got to I'm going to stay and keep working with right, right. I stayed that night. We made three records. One of the records became um, a, a, a song that we got a Grammy for with Smokey Robinson. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it was literally from one trip out of the studio right. to a, a right. different group of musicians and like bringing in some different energy. Right. So I was saying I look forward to opportunities yeah. when I can like get out of this zone yeah. and make something that could be greater. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking like that because... Uh -huh, we know what we can do. Like, look, when you co collaborating right. with Kanye, right, right, right. but even doing this, that brings out a different version of you. Absolutely. Where it's like, you know, you know, that's just scratching the surface. You know, yeah, right. you know, there's more to come. You know what I'm saying? But that's crazy. I mean, the thought of just work with an artist and they, they 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 help you push the envelope and like something that I I know that you know that you can do it all anyway. You know what I'm saying? Anytime, whenever. It's, time calls because you just had experience you know what i'm saying but um it's not like working with bad artists like you know what i'm saying people that know what the fuck they want it's a blessing and, and they fuck with you you know yeah. what i'm saying and they fuck with you so that's just like a marriage made in heaven because it's like you know something dope is going to come out of it because here you got anderson pop you got alc you can't tell me a motherfucking grammy not coming out of that you understand what i'm saying even though you're not even hitting for that yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to come out of that because it's just so much greatness inside of that. That's like a producer's dream, Tom. You heard? Yeah, yeah. nah. <laughs> Listen, it, I, I've i been a fly in the wall for certain moments. I mean, not not that moment with Al. Um, but but just being in the studio around y'all and, and watching somebody walk in and just... That just happened when... Um, when I was just out. I saw Al in February, right? It wasn't a producer, but I'm going to just see Al. I'm in Cali. And right. I go to the studio, give him a pound. He's like, yo, let me introduce you to my man. Yo, Todd, this is my man, Sean. Yo, what up? I'm Sean. I'm Todd. I give him a pound. Then I look, I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's big Sean. You're not just like Sean. You like, like this is you're an artist. And there was a point where I was so used to that being around when you were recording and, and making music have that it, it almost threw me off for a second but again it's that moment where the conversations that that come about out of those moments just are so crazy so just being a fly on the wall hearing some of those it's like yo if if people understood like the level of some of the conversations that were happening both music and and outside of music so then when y'all yeah. are really working together and just trying to collaborate and and catch a vibe and just thinking about what music could do when you got that type of greatness in the building you absolutely right Th there's nothing but greatness that can come out of that true indeed and speaking of working with dope artists how is it like working with big sean 
It was dope, man. Sean is a, he's like a real like perfectionist. Mm. You know, he gives a fuck about his craft a lot. And I always knew that listening to his music because he, he made a lot of commercial, like commercially successful, successful. big records. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, but I always, even when I would hear those records, I always would hear something real clever or witty in his flow or his writing. I'm like, this dude is really good. And yeah, it was like uh, we had first link last year through the Larry June joint. Yeah, he came, got on the record, and we just started building. And yeah, he's man. It's like it's it's, it's when you look at people who are perfectionists, right, it's, right, it's, right. it's cool because it pushes you too. It, it it assures you that you're not the only maniac. Uh, you crazy too? Right. Right? Let's go be crazy. Right, okay. right, right. <laughs> but yeah, Sean is a perfectionist, and yeah, I love working with him. And, and you know, I, I never worked with him before. I don't even think I met him before. <laughs> but just by listening to his music, I can tell he's an artist's favorite artist. Like your favorite artist, favorite artist. You understand what I'm saying? Because when I listen to his lyrics, and me just knowing how hard it is to write lyrics, you know how hard it is to write fucking lyrics. It's like he make it sound easy. He's right. all the way in it. He's all the way in it for sure. And such a cool dude. Like, you know, I regular, not just yeah, not yeah, that yeah. rap shit. Just yeah. some straight up great person, man. But yeah, yeah. He, he deserves what he got because he's really working for it. Yeah. I believe that. And, you know, with that being said, come on, let's go to the class. <laughs> the door's <laughs> open. <laughs> nice segue. Let's go make a class. Here. Yo. Been looking for coming on Likewise, today, man. Come I on, stuck off that. the realness. Thanks again. Todd. Thanks, Dr. Todd Craig. You got God in the Out building. The school. Out God in the building. Shout out to Tasia. Tasia's in the building, too. You know what I mean? Prodigy's daughter. We're here. Um, we all here, man. We about to go make a classic, despite what we probably said about it, it can't be a media classic, but. Fuck that. We'll God, break that God, rule. We're going to break the rules Go back on our word. <laughs> Yo, peace out, y'all. Thanks, Samaj. Another episode. We motherfucking out of here. We got work.